My name is Daryl Holtkamp. I want to start by thanking Merck Animal Health for funding the Global Swine Benchmarking Project and for inviting me here to speak to you today. I also want to acknowledge my collaborators on that project, Drs. Lee Schultz and Dermot Hayes, both agricultural economists at Iowa State University. While the Global Swine Benchmarking Project was done to address several questions, I'm going to focus on the two primary questions here today. Who are the world's best pork producers? And what are the factors that give countries a competitive advantage or disadvantage over other countries? The raw data for the Global Swine Benchmarking Project came primarily from an international benchmarking network known as Interpig. In the table below, you can see the countries that are represented, as well as the individual institutions that provided data for each country. The institutions are primarily academic and scientific uh, institutions with some producer groups as well as governmental bodies. So the representatives in Interpig then uh, for each country uh, are responsible for gathering production and financial data uh, from the farm records to measure an average performance of, uh, of a representative swine farm in their respective country. After they gather the data, they meet once per year face to face to ensure the cross country comparisons are as accurate as possible. This year, of course, they'll be doing that remotely. The definitions they have then uh, are also standardized for many items such as uh, a gilt, for, uh, for example, uh, again, to assure cross country comparisons are accurate. They've been collecting data for many years now uh, for this. And so the, and the most recent data they have is for 2018. And so the analysis that's uh, being presented here this morning then is for that most current data in uh, 2018. Notably absent from the Interpig uh, data though is uh, information from countries in Asia uh, or for that matter, uh, any key importing countries. And so we decided to add uh, China and Japan. Uh, in the future, we'd like to add potentially more countries, uh, but this uh, for the 2018 analysis, uh, we added those two countries. And to do that, uh, to get data for those two countries, we then we relied on uh, Merck Animal Health technical marketing uh, and sales staff uh, to help us collect that data. For Japan, uh, the data came from a publicly available source uh, that is the Japanese Ministry for Agriculture, Fisheries, and Forestry. In China, there was no uh, publicly available source, and so we relied on data from uh, veterinarians and producers in China. And we also made some phone calls and met with some individuals in the U.S. who either extol, uh, consult extensively in China or who have pig ownership there. And as a result of those discussions, made some adjustments to the data that we obtained for China. It's also worth noting that China uh, is unique in that uh, the data does not represent an average for the entire country. Uh, instead, it re represents a subsection uh, of, the, of the industry uh, that is a modern large-scale uh, production where the building costs are for a single-story, non-filtered sow farm. Furthermore, the data uh, that we obtained from China was uh, for the uh, it was for prior to Af the introduction of African swine fever there, which, as you may recall, occurred in August of 2018, and so we asked the representatives, of the, the veterinarians and producers providing the data, to give data that uh, was for that time period before the introduction of African swine fever virus. Once we had the data, then we developed a production and economic model to estimate productivity, cost, revenue, and profit. You can see a screenshot of that model here, or at least a small part of it. Uh, it was built in Excel, and then it was also built by phase of production. And then aggregate, the results were aggregated to the breed to market, which is gonna be what I present to you here today. So to the questions. First, who are the world's best pork producers? I'll orient you to this chart first. Uh, on the vertical axis, uh, you have uh, the units are in dollars per kilogram carcass weight. And then on the horizontal axis, you have each country. The orange bars represent the total cost per country. The line represents the mar average market pig price for 2018. And the blue shaded area then represents a profit. So when the market pig price is above the total cost, those countries are profitable. Likewise, when the market prices are below the total cost, those countries were not profitable in 2018. So in 2018, Japan and China had the highest 
production cost on a per kilogram of carcass weight basis. Italy was third, primarily because they raise a very large Italian white hog uh, for a premium branded ham market there. And so by taking them, the pigs to much heavier weight, their uh, cost of production on a per kilogram uh, basis goes up as well. On the other end of the spectrum, you have uh, the state of Mato Grosso in Brazil. Uh, and it's, it's worth noting at this point that Brazil has two data points uh, for the two uh, main production regions in that country. Uh, MT stands for Mato Grosso and SC then stands for Santa Catarina. And Santa Catarina is the traditional pig producing area there. It's also uh, free of foot and mouth disease virus and so is able to export currently. Mato Grosso is the new frontier, new production frontier, if you will, uh, but unfortunately is uh, positive for foot and mouth disease and does have restrictions on, on exports as a result. This is the same chart, but um, uh, just highlighting different aspects of it. Uh, as you can see, market pig prices here are highest in Japan and China, as well as Italy. Market pig prices are lowest in Brazil and North America. You can see that pig prices generally are um, related to the total cost of production. So the higher the total cost of production, the higher the market pig prices in those countries. Because of their uh, relatively high market pig prices, profits in Japan and China in 2018 were relatively good. Most European countries either broke even or lost money in 2018. And Brazil and, and Canada lost money as well. The U.S. Uh, pr producers were, were uh, somewhat profitable in 2018. And then it's worth noting at this point then that uh, this, uh, of course, was before the, the ramp up of Chinese imports in response to African swine fever virus in 2018. This looks like a very similar chart, and it is, the, uh, except the units are different instead of on a dollar per kilogram basis. Now the vertical axis is in dollars per breeding female per year. And so you can see Japan and Italy are still in the top, top three here um, with the highest production costs on a per breeding female per year basis. China, however, has uh, moved to the right on this chart and appears to be more competitive by this measure. However, the reason for that uh, apparent, apparent competitiveness, though, is not necessarily good. It's mainly because Chinese uh, uh, Sows are less productive in terms of the number of pigs marketed per year, breeding female per year. And so the main, uh, because they're marketing fewer pigs, they have lower wean to market costs. And therefore, uh, in terms of the total cost on a per breeding female per year basis, uh, they appear to be doing much better. This chart, uh, again, the line represents market pig prices and the bars represent cost. The units on the axis is dollars per kilogram carcass weight basis. But this time, the costs then are broken down by category. And so you can see the blue here represents the fixed cost on a dollar per uh, kilogram carcass weight. Red is the feed cost, green is labor, and purple is animal health, and so forth. You can see that feed makes up a, the largest portion of cost in all the countries, particularly in Japan, China, and Italy with relatively high feed cost. Relatively low feed costs, though, in the U.S., Canada, and Brazil provide these countries with a significant uh, competitive advantage in terms of the cost of production. U.S. and Brazil also benefit from relatively low fixed cost, the blue area, and relatively low uh, labor cost, the green area. The purple I should, uh, wanted to point out here in each country represents uh, the animal health cost and uh, makes up a relatively small uh, percentage or portion of the overall cost in every country. To the second question then, what are the factors that give countries a competitive advantage or disadvantage? This chart, uh, I'll orient you uh, first. Uh, the orange shaded area uh, represents the kilograms of uh, pork produced uh, per breeding female per year. And the uh, units, uh, the axis for that uh, is on the right. The two components that go into the total kilograms uh, produced per female per year then are the average market weight and that's the gray shaded bar here with the units on the left in kilograms and the number of pigs marketed per breeding female per year, the left axis. And so you can see here, Italy with its very heavy carcass weight leads in terms of the total carcass weight produced per breeding female per year. Denmark and Netherlands sell the largest number of pigs per breeding female per year. 
and therefore are also uh, rate very high in terms of the number of kilograms of, of pork produced per breeding female per year. China lags in this measure. While their average market weights are average to a little below average, what drags them down is the low product, sow productivity. They're with marketing uh, just a little over 18 and a half pigs per breeding female per year. This table has a lot of numbers in it, so bear with me. I'll walk you through these. But here we're exploring the factors that give producers a leg up, measured by profit over producers in other countries. So we do this by setting the cost, prices, and productivity for each country to the same value. That is the average for all countries. The only values then that vary when we do the analysis for each country and each factor uh, are the values for that factor. Any differences then in profitability are strictly due to the country differences in the values for that factor. As an example, uh, one of the factors evaluated was, was feed prices. For that factor then, the feed prices in the breeding, nursery, and finishing phase were set to the values reported uh, for each country. All of the other values then were the same for each country and set at the average for all countries in the data set. For each factor then, the relative advantage or disadvantage is then measured as a difference in prof profitability from that relative, uh, relative to that hypothetical uh, country with the average values uh, for the factor evaluated. An advantage or a disadvantage is reported as a positive or a negative contribution to profitability above or below that hypothetical average country. Let me walk you through then for feed prices. We'll take a look at a couple of the numbers. So you can see that in the US, Producers, uh, because of low feed prices uh, in that country, have a relative advantage to the hypothetical average of 33 cents per kilogram of pork produced per year, uh, uh, just kilograms per pork, uh, kilograms per pork produced. In Japan, on the other end, because of the relatively high cost of production, their competitive disadvantage, indicated by the negative number here, is 74 cents per kilogram of carcass weight. So we'll look at each of these factors in turn, but before we do that, I do want to point out a couple things. First of all, the, uh, the shading uh, that you can see in the table uh, has meaning. Basically, the green, the positive numbers indicating that those countries have a competitive advantage because of that factor are uh, shaded green. And the darker the shade of green, then the bigger the, the positive uh, competitive advantage or the positive value. The red uh, numbers, uh, the, uh, the numbers with the uh, red shaded area are negative numbers indicating those countries have a uh, relative dis competitive disadvantage uh, to the hypothetical average. And again, the darker the red, the, more, the larger the competitive disadvantage. And so you can see the two biggest numbers in this table uh, both uh, fall under the market pig prices where Brazil has a uh, competitive disadvantage of 88 cents uh, per kilogram of carcass weight uh, because of market pig prices. Japan, on the other hand, has a $3.36 competitive advantage uh, because of the relatively high market pig prices in that country. And so just by looking at the, the darkness of the shades of color, you can see that the three factors that contribute the most to market pig uh, to the uh, competitive advantage or disadvantage in each country are the market pig prices, feed prices, and productivity. The other factors that we looked at were the fixed costs and then wage, uh, wage rates as well as labor usage, or so combined those two would be labor cost. And so you can see that those factors were not uh, insignificant contributors to uh, the competitive advantage or disadvantage of each country, but relative to market pig prices and feed prices and pro productivity, they contributed relatively less. So let's look at each factor in turn. And uh, in each case, uh, I've sorted the uh, uh, relative competitive advantage or disadvantage from uh, largest to smallest uh, number here. So again, uh, the countries with competitive advantage will be at the top. Uh, countries with the most competitive disadvantage will be at the bottom here. And in each case, we'll look at then uh, the uh, some values for those factors so you can uh, get an idea of why uh, they're getting this competitive advantage or disadvantage. So this is for market pig prices here. In this chart, uh, again, the vertical axis is in dollars, uh, kilogram, dollars per kilogram of carcass weight. And the bars represent the average, or I'm sorry, the market pig price then uh, average for 2018 in each country. 
the the line then represents the average of uh, market pig price in 2018 for all countries. And so you can see again, these uh, market pig prices are uh, distributed rather asymmetrically. And so you have very, very high prices in Japan uh, and China. Uh, and, and as a result, we have basically only four countries that are above the average uh, market price, that being Japan, China, Italy, and Sweden. Uh, all the rest are below. But again, that's because of the asymmetrical distribution. However, when you look at, again, the, the relative competitive advantage and disadvantage, Japan, as we mentioned, has a $3.36 uh, competitive advantage, very, uh, rel very high. Uh, and then the countries in North America uh, and Brazil uh, are on the other end of the spectrum. For feed prices, uh, again, uh, competitive advantage and disadvantage uh, here, sorted by the highest advantage to the, to the largest competitive disadvantage. And on this chart, you can see now the vertical axis is in, in dollars per metric ton of feed. The red bars represent the weighted average diet price for feed in the sow herd, and the green bars represent the weighted average diet price uh, in the, from wean to market. And then the line here represents the average uh, for all countries as well. So you can see that U.S., Brazil, and Canada benefit from relatively low feed prices here, while Italy, Ireland, and China, and Japan fare relatively badly on this uh, factor. In this table, then, we look at uh, productivity as a factor for uh, the relative competitive advantage or disadvantage of producers in each country. And you can see in this table, then, uh, we're displaying the number of pigs weaned per female per year and the number of pigs marketed per female per year. Red is the number of pigs weaned, green is the number of pigs marketed, and then the average uh, for all countries in 2018 is expressed by the line here. We looked at six uh, productivity majors, uh, three in the breeding herd and three in the, from wean to market. Uh, the three in the breeding herd were number of litters farrowed per breeding female per year, the number of pigs uh, born alive per litter farrowed, and pre-weaning mortality. From wean to market, we looked at wean to market mortality, as well as average daily gain and fee conversion. So in this table, we're capturing four of those six measures. We're capturing all of the breeding uh, herd productivity measures and uh, wean to market mortality. So what we're missing is then wean to market average daily gain in fee conversion. However, those uh, all six pr uh, productivity measures then are calculated or incorporated into uh, the relative advantage or disadvantage that you see in this table here for productivity. So you can see producers in Denmark, the Czech Republic, and the Netherlands are the most productive and get the largest competitive advantage because of that. On the other end of the scale, you have China, Japan, and Italy, uh, who are the least productive. Uh, again, Italy in part due to the fact that they raise the very large uh, pigs for the premium ham market. In this uh, slide, we looked at uh, fixed cost as a factor contributing to the competitive advantage or disadvantage in each country. Uh, here in the uh, chart, you can see the uh, on the vertical axis here is the dollar uh, fixed cost and dollar per breeding female per year basis. And that then each bar represents uh, the value in 2018 for each country. And then the line represents the average for all countries in 2018. And, and so you can see again here that corresponds to this table where you have uh, low, relatively low fixed cost uh, in uh, Brazil and Canada here that contribute to their relative competitive advantage uh, for that factor. Uh, on the other end of the scale, you have then uh, Finland, Austria, and Italy have relatively high fixed cost which gives them a relatively uh, a relative competitive disadvantage then to other producers. So in this slide, we'll look at labor cost. And we break that down, uh, the total labor cost here, into the two components, labor usage and the wage rates. In this table here, uh, our chart uh, to the right, uh, you can see that on the left axis here is a number of hours uh, per breeding female per year. And that's represented by the red bars. The blue line represents the labor cost or the wage rate, and the units for that are on the right axis. And so as you can see fairly clearly that there's an inverse relationship between labor usage and the wage rate. So as wage rates go up, uh, those countries, producers in those countries tend to use less labor. Two notable exceptions to that are Japan here, where they have uh, the highest uh, average wage rates in 2018 but still use a relatively large amount of labor on a per breeding female per year basis. Uh, on the other end of the scale, you have the U.S. here, which has relatively low wage rates uh, in 2018, uh, 
but uh, still uses relatively little labor uh, on a per breeding female uh, per year basis. When you combine all, uh, both uh, labor usage and wage rates then, and look at uh, the overall labor cost, uh, the countries that get the biggest competitive advantage primarily because of their low wage rates here are Brazil uh, as well as China. And so again, you see the, the, the advantage, competitive advantage comes from the wage rates. They actually have a competitive disadvantage because of labor usage, uh, but the net of those two uh, gives those countries a relative uh, competitive advantage because of their low labor cost. On the other end of the scale, you have Japan and Italy, again, with relatively high wage rates, uh, Japan with high wage rates and high labor usage. Uh, and so both of those countries have a competitive, are at a competitive disadvantage advantage because of the relatively high labor cost. So in summary then, who are the world's best pork producers? Well, the lowest cost producers are in Brazil and the countries in North America. The highest cost producers are in Asia. Europe has the world's most productive producers in terms of kilograms of pork produced per breeding female per year, uh, but tends to be in the middle uh, in terms of overall cost of production. What are the factors that give countries a competitive advantage or disadvantage? Well, the most important factors uh, were market pig prices, feed prices, and productivity. I want to wrap up then by again thanking Merck Animal Health for funding the Global Swine Benchmarking Project. I also want to thank uh, the assistance of three individuals specifically who spend a lot of time helping us collect the data in Japan and China. Uh, Hong Lin, uh, who represents MSD Animal Health in the Asia Pacific and Sub-Saharan Africa area. And then Di Gao uh, with MSD Animal Health in China and Hiroyuki Akimoto uh, with MSD Animal Health in Japan. And so again, thanks to those individuals. Thank you and have a good day.